from the place where we got stuck, maybe beyond, there has been footprints, foot tracks. There they are, over on that side of the trail right now. You can see them coming here. Somebody had a bad day. Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Everide channel. And today I apologize for the ominous uh, title here, you know, don't make this mistake. I'm not going to waste your time or make you wade through an entire video to find out what that mistake is. Basically, it is do not ride past or through snowdrifts. Um, we learned this the hard way. Uh, I've actually had to contact my wife through my inReach. That's the rescue device that I carry. Um, a few times because I won't learn this lesson. And even today, as I was scouting the Everide Loop with two of my good friends, I thought, hey, I've got my friends with me. We can pull a bike up through the snow if we need to. And it was a bad idea. Anyway, that is the advice. Uh, if you want to stick around for the adventure, you are welcome to. Uh, we had a really good time. There's some good scenery. But all in all, if you take anything from this video and you leave right now, just please stay safe. Do not ride through snowdrifts. The odds of more snowdrifts along your way are very, very high. So with that, thank you so much for watching and much love as always. Enjoy. All right, what's up guys? We are here scouting a part of the Everide Loop that should connect the Arizona Backcountry Adventure route with the Everide Loop and then which would also connect it to the Utah BDR. Super cool stuff. We got Aaron today. Yeah. And then uh, we also have Andrew, uh, who's back there unloading some stuff. And he was on a rally this week with some other gentlemen. It was a great rally, but we weren't quite done. We had to, uh, even after the rally ended, I was like, do you guys want to go scout some stuff? We're like, let's go scout some stuff. So I'm excited. It's going to be fun. So this should take us north enough to find some other cool parts to the Everide Loop. We're still not done looking at different trails, trying to find the very best trails for the loop. And it's all for you guys, because uh, I love you. <laughs> and I love the community. It's just about there. Um, I've scouted a ton of trails, but I, I just want to make sure that I'm including the best trails. <laughs> and hopefully we'll find a little bit of the southern portion of the route as well. Anyway, we'll show you what it's like. All right, here we go. All right, you guys, so I'm going to do a little voiceover as we look at some of this helmet camera footage. Please pardon me, this is not going to be a super cinematic video. There's not going to be no drone shots, very few static shots, uh, you know, with the cinema camera. I had all this stuff with me, but on this day, we decided to prioritize just getting that helmet camera footage of the trails, of the scouting. That way I can remember what we traversed and then put it into the flow test scale because I don't want people getting in over their heads if things get difficult. Um, it was a beautiful trail, but it was a very overcast day. As you can see, um, there was a huge storm rolling in to the town that we left from. We left from St. George. It took about two hours for us to get to the point where we unloaded from the truck. And there was a, like I said, a huge storm, super scary. Apparently there was going to be tons of snow. We had riders that were in the group that were going to come with us drop out because of it. And it made this really spooky because a lot of the reviews of this trail, of this uh, dirt road, even the easy parts, people were like, it is absolutely impassable if it's wet at all. So we were nervous about doing it, but hey, uh, Andrew was in town. It was the day that we had. We had to push on. We had to make it happen. And we did. So we took off uh, and we had a pretty good time just hoping and praying that the rain would not fall on us. All right, this is where we start getting into the real unknown. So far, it's been a breeze. This is the route that I'm wondering about. And about here-ish, uh, it turns into what we have no idea will be. However, we do know that it is called Death Ridge. <laughs> so there's that. So onward. So with me on this trip right there, you can see Gosverner Arch, which was pretty cool. We didn't have time to get close to it. Uh, and I just included a tiny little clip for it. Uh, but yeah, we had Andrew, who I mentioned had just been on a rally, and then Aaron, who had been on a couple rallies before. 
Um, he actually lives here in uh, near St. George with me. Here is a nice overlook that we came to. Of course, the wide-angle camera just destroys it because it all looks very flat and uninteresting, but I promise it was really good. This would serve as an, excel an excellent connector from the Everide Loop to the Arizona BDR or vice versa. It's also just a nice road if you want to cruise and check things out, of course, if it's not wet. Some of the spots would be a little more difficult, I think, for newer riders or riders on big adventure bikes. We've got a little river crossing there. Okay, so uh, here we are. It honestly doesn't look bad from the beginning here, but uh, it's called Death Ridge. <laughs> Do you guys want to go ahead? <laughs> <laughs> We're going on Death Ridge. I love how I make you guys go first on Death Ridge. <laughs> this road here is called Last Chance Road. <laughs> this is Death Ridge. It says impassable for full-size vehicles. Let's see what happens. Suddenly I'm, I'm a little nervous. We were just commenting on how this was just an easy trail, but let's see how it goes. Last chance to turn around right there. All right, so as you can see the views around, and pardon the head shake, I usually try to stay pretty still with my helmet camera, but again, this was not really view, uh, filmed for you know viewing purposes. I just wanted to show what it's like to um, scout a trail. But uh, yeah, you can see that it was a narrow trail. There wasn't anything really super difficult on this trail up to this point. Um, cruising along, we were making comments uh, in the headsets like, hey, I think I could get my truck through here. This is not that bad. Um, further on in the trail, there were points where it was like, this would be difficult to get a truck in. Now, something that I want to bring up is there were, and you can see them in some of the footage. Here's some of that snow. <clears throat> you can see them in the footage. There were footprints that led for probably about 20 miles. Somebody got stuck up here in the snow drifts that we were talking about and walked for 20 miles. Now, we were on the way back, we were keeping track of these footprints. Where did they go off? Did they find help? Was there a truck to come rescue them? Because they seemed fairly recent. Uh, however, um, they were there, I think, the last time that it snowed or rained because they, it looked like they were slipping around but they went on for 20 miles somebody had to hike out 20 miles because they made bad decisions with the snow drifts now we didn't get in far enough or maybe we missed the point or maybe their truck or side by side or motorcycle was pulled out um, we don't know all we know is that there were tracks for yeah, about 20 miles on this trail and whoever it was my goodness, that was a bad day or night that they had because, uh, as you can see, this is a very up and down type of trail. They were obviously hiking it in very slick conditions, and they were hiking it one way, so we know that they were stuck. This wasn't a pleasure hike. This <laughs> Nobody's that crazy. I know, like, ultra marathoners and stuff like that, you know, they got some... But, no, this was... They were walking out. Uh, it was very... Uh, anyway, it was very apparent. Anyway, the views from the top, even with the... Uh, overcast day were just, you know, pretty pretty nice. Um, not a lot of color on this trail, actually. Everything was kind of uh, gray and, and uh, whitish. Um, not a lot of that red Utah dirt, as you can see. But all in all, still an absolutely beautiful trail. Lots of variety. The big thing that we were looking out for was obviously any rain that was happening. That was a kind of a scary thing on the back of our minds. We did have a few raindrops with this overcast weather, but uh, that was it. And we, we did get really, really lucky because on the way home, it started storming really, really hard. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was kind of a mess. But as you can see, there were a couple of streams that we had to go through from some of that runoff. And then there's a lot of these little rain ruts that go through the trail as well that you've been able to see. Um, there's also, you know, you can see that there's been some trucks and stuff going along. Uh, but yeah, look for those footprints. You can see them every once in a while, and that would have been just the worst. All right, you guys, so we've gone through, uh, past some snow on this trail before. This 
is probably the point as a solo rider that you'd want to just turn around because you don't know how deep that snow is, you don't know what's underneath, whether it's super, super muddy. This was massively slick clay that we were in. Uh, and so this could have been really bad as a solo ride to even attempt going through the snow right there. And like I said, when you see a snow drift, there will be more snow. You're at an altitude, there's going to be shade, look at the mountains to the left, there's going to be snow up ahead, it's going to be impassable, why go on? Um, you know, it is fun. I mean, we all love riding motorcycles, we all love adventure, but up to a point it's never fun to have to call for rescue it's never fun to get out the gps and have to send that emergency message to your wife saying bring the truck come get me making her waste her day hours of her day coming to rescue you and also putting herself in peril as well i'm really sensitive to that because i don't want to put my wife in dangerous situations and i don't want to be in dangerous situations either I wish the ruts to the side of the road were a little gentler. So here you can see we're going through way too much snow. And this is downhill, it's not a good idea. We did discuss it and we actually talked about it. We were like, never do this, but here we are, we're gonna do it because uh, we could see on the map, and this was the trick, we could see on the map that the destination was pretty close to us up ahead. So we decided to push yeah. through and it was a terrible, terrible idea because coming back through this, uh, even on this super gentle slope, would have been, yeah, I mean, it was going to be an absolute nightmare. We were betting um, hours and hours of comfort in our day that there would be no more snow past this. The odds of that happening are almost zero. Um, if there's snow like this here, there's probably gonna be bigger drifts that are impassable up ahead. Normally I wouldn't do such a stupid thing alone, but since I have you guys to do stupid things with... <laughs> that was funny at the time, and later when we were pushing our bikes up through the snow, that was not a funny joke. Okay, that was, that was something. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. So this, even on the wide angle camera, gives you a little bit better look at the slope that we were going up against. Yeah. Again, not a huge slope, but uh, not, uh, not a teeny tiny slope either. Just not wise right. to go through the snow there. Well, good, good. You can tell those snow drifts get pretty beefy up there. But well, dang, man, this is where our scouting session ends, I think. I'm, I'm not going. <laughs> oh, wah, wah. But it is what it is. That's why, we, that's why we scout it, you know? Without the snow, right, if this is late spring, summer, is this a track you would bring people to, you think? I think so. I probably wouldn't route big bikes along here for the, for the loop. Going up that snow drift. That's gonna be a kick. <laughs> okay, I wanted to point out something deceptive because even spots like this right here can be really, really bad. Because obviously there's a lot of runoff from the snow going down the hill and the mud to the side can be just as slippery as any of the snow uh, that you're going through. I have been stuck in things like that. I've had to call for a rescue from my wife. Um, it's it's difficult stuff and also having the mud right there the side of the hill can slough off and your motorcycle is down the hill in the snow before you know it uh, so be aware of situations like this please don't ride near snow all right so here I had a good amount of momentum some traction and then I hit the brakes right there okay, for some reason high line. I got nervous, and once you lose momentum going up a hill with snow, you're done. And here's the rear wheel slips out to the right, as it always does because there's a slight slope to the right. There it yeah, goes again. I think that's gonna. 
I might get down here actually. Here, uh, let's try to get the back of the bike up here. Can you imagine if you were alone doing this? That would be super gnarly. And even a truck or a side-by-side -side would have a really difficult time making it through and then back through that snow drift right there. So this was extremely stupid there to go. go through there. Here I was able to get a little bit of traction with the push from the boys. Go a little further where there was dirt. And then as soon as the okay. snow hits. This part's probably gonna be difficult. I'm gonna go for the low side. Oh man, this is gonna be a nightmare, guys. What happens over here, I wonder? Man, I hate snow. I hate it so bad. <laughs> so, as you saw, we ran into some issues back there. We got a lot of snow and we went down and then there's even more snow further up the way. As is always the case, never, I even said, never go through snow. <laughs> and yet here we are doing that very thing. So we've got to push, we've got to push the bikes back up. We'll probably get some uh, pine boughs just to make things a little easier traction wise. Oh, that's the, that's the way. That's what you do when you're scouting a trail, right? What type of fun is this? This is just not. <laughs> That's always fun. Yeah. It's a good learning experience. Even though I've already supposed to be learned, <laughs> should have learned this lesson like many times already. Don't dr ride through the snow. There's always more snow. What are the odds that the only snow drift on the mountain is the one that you go through and then there's no more? Zero. <laughs> oh. Okay, it's wide angle, so it's way up there. But we do have the Kobe way up there. I was able to go clear around here. Kind of bushwhack it a little bit. Feel bad for that, but this is going to take us hours and hours. We've struggled enough already. Um, it's just ice underneath. There's no... You'd think it's ground, but... Well, actually, there is ground there. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> I'm a liar. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. I'll film these guys doing it. I dropped the bike one time. Kind of coming up the hill, I just didn't uh, clutch enough. You know what I mean? You gotta feather that clutch. That's the biggest bike we got here. So it shouldn't be hard to get these other two up. I got a lot of fuel in there because I expected this to be an adventure ride today. For the most part, it has been. <laughs> right, Aaron? Yeah, great adventure. Yes, and <laughs> he says this. What are you saying in your head, though? This is fun. <laughs> I think he's me. genuine. Yeah. <laughs> I could be sitting at home watching, what, March Madness? What fun is that? Okay, next bike. First time you saw this guy on Instagram, he wasn't wearing boots. Now he's not wearing a helmet. So you guys, you'll have to give him crap for that. There you go, charge it right! Yeah! Yes! The pine boughs we put down doing good. Here we go, Andrew. We need to put tracks on our bike. Right? Yeah, we got snow bikes right here. Nice. Aaron's already clear up there. I'm trying to hike this snow as fast as I can. Oh, that week starter doesn't sound good to me, man. <laughs> There's Aaron going up the hill. I'm sorry you can't see him. Cutting left, yeah. There you go. Back it up and get some momentum. Lots of throttle. You got it. He's got it. Oh, that bush is what got me. Oh no, he dug a hole. You got this. Stay nice and forward. Ooh. I just 
just want to point out, we were extremely lucky to find this dry side trail go. off the side of the road. This never happens. All right, Tyler. How is your license plate staying on? I don't know. What is happening here? Oh, you got it? This is, oh, it's oh, a it's hinge. Okay. I, that's brilliant. This is, this is custom, right? Timu. Timu? Oh my gosh. I lost one of the bolts. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Put it up for off-road mode. Yeah, hide the plate. Don't yeah incognito Just mode. Just like Crocs. <laughs> Sport mode. Sport mode. You want to handle this and I'll... Yeah. I'll give it my best shot. All right. So by now you guys are probably wondering like, why aren't you guys, why don't you have your helmets on? And where is your armor? Where's your jacket? Where's, you know, stuff like that. Um, we had worked on uh, getting the Cove up through the snow for a long time before we found this trail. We hiked it. Um, we did a lot of moving bikes. We were all gassed. We were all very hot. We had to take our helmets off. It was, uh, it was very hot uh, with all of our gear on and stuff like that. So. Helmets were off. I'm sorry, that's not a good example, um, but that's just how it was on this uh, particular thing. We did not want to hike back to the top of the hill to get our helmets back on. If we can get you over this little route, you're there. That was so scary that his bike wouldn't start. Not happy. This was hilarious right here because from my perspective, <laughs> Aaron was pushing and it was just so much dirt <laughs> blasting him. Nice <laughs> job. And he was very patient about it. Good. Good sport. <laughs> it was the most roost I've seen a person eat. Maybe ever. <laughs> but it was loose dirt, thankfully. All right, we're back on the bikes, back on the trail. No more snowy sections to go. Aaron's getting his kickstand. There you go. <laughs> uh, it's it's difficult. It is. Plus, hiking up that hill like destroyed. Me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, we should have stopped this stuff right here and been like, nope, nope, done. <laughs> All right, Aaron. What, uh, how do you feel? Tired but happy. Oh, yeah. That was fun. That was fun. Gorgeous I, scenery. Yes. That is stunning. I think, uh, well, we failed. <laughs> In a good way. We, we failed, mission failed successfully. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I look like a, oh, I look like some kind of a clown. Oh, yeah. Kind of a dirty face. Um, yes, mission mission failed successfully. Andrew, how do you feel? What's your take? On, I mean, I feel good. It was fun. It would have been nice to go the whole way just to see it. Yeah. But it was a fun route and definitely be, I don't know, it'd be fun on a, for the big bike boys. It like would they're be. trying to get off the off the beaten path. Yeah, I think it would be good. Would yeah, you... you definitely don't want to go through there when it's wet. Yeah. You can oh. see. <laughs> oh yeah, the water lines, the all the stuff going through, that'll eat your lunch. But yeah, mission mission failed successfully. It was a fun day of riding, even though that's that's like how scouting goes every time. It's just how it is. All right. Well, do you guys want to say it? What do you guys? You can say ever ride out. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, get ever, it. Do it. Ever ride out. <laughs>